Well, well, well. Here's Mama Bloom's Brood. is sleeping, if not uh, peacefully, a trifle noisily, as Mama says. Jake. Jake, Jake, get up. Jake, get up. Uh, what? Get up, Jake, oh, huh? Mama, why do you do this to me? I'm sleepy. Jake, for the 15th time, I said you should get up. Uh, Mama, all right, I, I heard you. Come on, come on, please, and don't aggravate me, huh? All right, Mama, let me... One more little snooze. Uh, <laughs> Mama, uh, what time is it? The clock already says it's an inch past seven o'clock. <laughs> uh, Mama, let me sleep. All right, all right, so I'll be a little late this morning. Jake, I tell you, you got to get up. You can't come to work half past nine in the morning. What are you, a night watchman? Um, all right, uh, all right, Jake, go on, sleep. Sleep. If anything comes up at the factory, Sydney will do it. Sydney? No, I'll get up. No, get no, up. lay in bed. What's the difference? <laughs> I want to talk to you anyhow. Uh, Mama, if you didn't want me to get up, why do you make so much noise? I changed my mind. I was thinking. Thinking, thinking. Well, can't you think when I'm sleeping? No, I can't. I can't think unless somebody answers me. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, Mama. Go ahead and think. I'll answer you. Hmm. Jake. Hmm? When shall we have the wedding? Wedding? Who's wedding? Yetta's wedding. Huh? When do you think? Yeah, then. Make it next week. How can it be next week? She just got engaged yesterday. Boys, the girls mm. have got to give her snowstorms. Snowstorms? What are snowstorms? Jake, I'm surprised at you. In this country, when a girl gets engaged, all the other girls get together and give a party. And they give her some kind of presents, like uh, like things for the kitchen. That's what you call snowstorms. <laughs> snowstorms? Mommy, you mean shower. All shower. right, all right. Call it showers. It's still present. Well, the whole thing, you know, Mama, the whole thing is silly to me. Mm-hmm. Each one gives the other one presents, and in the end, they're all even. That's why it ain't silly. Each one gives the other one presents, and in the end, everybody's even. Nobody's lost nothing, and everybody feels good for two reasons. Two reasons? Mm-hmm. What two reasons? In the first place, they give somebody something, so they feel rich, and that makes them feel good. That's the first reason. Uh-huh. And what's the second reason? In the second place, when it comes their turn, they get some things free themselves, so they feel good. So the whole thing breaks out. Everybody has some fun, and it don't cost nothing. It don't cost nothing. It don't cost nothing, no. <laughs> Meantime, I pay the bills. Mm, is that something new? No, I should say not. Uh, you ought to be glad, Jake. That's the only fun you get, the little silly bills. Food, everybody has to pay. Rent, everybody has to pay. The only fun you get from paying bills is the little foolish bills. Uh, well, what's the use of arguing with you? You're always right. Of course I'm right. Well, uh, one thing is good. Yet is getting a rich fella. Whatever you pay now, you'll save next mm-hmm. year. And what does he look like? <laughs> when a fella's got that much money, he don't have to be a Robert Gable. Mm, he don't, huh? You know, Mama, sometimes, sometimes I, I wonder what you're talking about. But uh, about this fella, you know, I don't remember it. Was he here at Sarah's wedding? Of course he was here. How do you think she got engaged to him? By television? But how do I know how people get engaged? No. <laughs> You got engaged once yourself. <laughs> you have to remind me. 
<laughs> well, I didn't exactly mean you and me. I didn't mean you and me either. All right, what do you mean? Don't pretend you don't know what I mean. I don't have to pretend, Mom. I don't know. Don't tell me you don't know. Lying I don't like and you're not. Better to tell the truth no matter what it is than to lay there and try to pull the sheep over my knife. All night. right, all right. I think I'll get up. What kind of a way to win an argument is that? Stay there. Just when I'm in the middle, you get up and run away. Mommy, you're talking like a fool. Yeah, maybe it's because I know who I'm talking to. Becky, I promise you, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so you don't remember Ida Goldfart, huh? Ida Goldfart? Ida Goldfart? Yeah, Ida Goldfart. And who is Ida Goldfart? Uh, I didn't have to ask you that when I first met you. Oh, now I know. <laughs> I thought so. Do you mean to tell me you're starting an argument about a girl I took out 24 and a half years ago? Oh. If you don't remember her, why do you know it's exactly 24 and a half years ago you took her out? I suppose you don't remember the night you took her to Coney Highland, huh? <laughs> she had on a red dress with a big black hat. She looked like a fool and so did you. Yeah? How can you remember the 24 and a half years ago I looked like a fool? Jake, I look at you now and it comes back to me right away. Oh, poor Ida. I wonder what became of her. I'll tell you. She lives in St. Louis and she's married to a man in the real estate business. She's got four children, and one of her sons is married to a cousin of Moldovine's wife's uncle, the deep one. Oh, I never liked her. Then why did you take her out? Were you mad at yourself? Well, I was new in this country, and the fellow introduced me to her, and she invited me over to the house, so I wanted to pay her back. So I took her out, maybe twice. Maybe twice. Well, maybe three times. Maybe three times. <laughs> if that's the way you figured numbers down at the factory, you would have been broke 20 years ago. Four times you took her to Coney Island. I know. Twice you went walking. Once you took her to Max Wiener's restaurant for a meal, and she had roast lamb and two desserts. Mama, I can't understand you. How can you remember things that happened so many years ago? You know, if I was to ask you who was the king of England three years ago, you wouldn't know. No. If I was to ask you the name of the governor of the state, you wouldn't know or you couldn't remember. Maybe. But what Ida Goldfarb ate in Max Wiener's restaurant 20 years ago, you know every bite, including the dessert. Yeah, I'm no different than anybody else. Jake, if the fellow next door has his head cut off, everybody says that's too bad, and they forget it. But if they have a pain in their foot for 15 minutes, 20 years later, they can tell you every little thing about it. Ah, there's two different kinds of things in the world. Things that happen to us and the things that happen to other people. <laughs> well, Mama, I guess you're right. Very sure, much. <laughs> Jake, mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell me one thing and don't lie, huh? No. Did you have a kiss there? Well, I... Good morning, folks. Oh, 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 good morning. Good, good morning, morning. Come right in. Well, were good you morning. surprised? <laughs> surprised? About what? About me getting engaged. <laughs> you bet I was surprised. How about you, Ma? Well, I wasn't exactly surprised. Nothing surprises me anymore. How's that? <laughs> Yet in a country where you buy a little thing called a red and turn a button, and you hear a man singing a song 2,000 miles away, why should I be surprised in an engagement? Well, how did you feel then, Ma? I haven't decided how I felt. Well, how can you not know how you felt? I want to talk to Yvette first, and then I'll tell you how I felt. If she feels good... Then I feel good. But she's got to feel good. Otherwise, why did she get herself engaged? If he was a poor fella, I wouldn't have to ask. It's because he's a rich fella, I'm wondering. Did she get engaged to the fella, or did she get engaged to his father's money? Mm -hmm. Monroe thinks he's got plenty yeah. of money. Oh, I'd love it if he didn't have a cent. That's silly, Yetta. I'm surprised at you. If he didn't have a cent, what would you live on? Oh, we'd get by. Getting by is no good. Well, other people do it. My daughters ain't other people. Ma, I can't figure you out. I thought you believed in people being in love before they were married. Now you're talking just the opposite. Honestly, you're all mixed up. I'm not mixed up. I said it straight. You listen to it mixed up. Yet the money's like children. Too much is no good. None at all is also no good. It's like anything else. In the middle, it's fine. Mama, what are you talking about? I'm talking about does Yetta love him? Well, I told you I did. Then everything's all right. Now we can settle down and talk business. <clears throat> uh, Yetta, when do you want to get married? Well, we thought a month from Tuesday. Well, why Tuesday? Why not? Is it against the construction of the United States to get married on a Tuesday? You mean the Constitution of the United States, Ma? I mean the law. But we thought we'd like to get married in the daytime instead of the evening. All right, all right. If you want, you should get married in the morning. No, she can't. Why not? She can't. I have reasons. Ma, we want a noon wedding. It's more fashionable. You can't have it. Well, why not, Ma? Oh. It's your wedding. Papa, you run the factory. I'll run the wedding. Well, I don't see what difference it makes to you, Ma. It makes a lot of difference to well, me. I'll let her get married at noon. Yet, uh, whose idea was it, this noon business? Mrs. Fink. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I thought so. <laughs> if brains was butter, Mrs. Fink would have to eat dry bread. All the society people get married at high noon. High noon, low noon, noon in the middle, that's fine for them. 
Then when you get married at night, you don't break any rules because you ain't society people. Mama, maybe I'm crazy. But what difference does it make to you if she gets married in the morning, the afternoon, or the middle of the night? I'll tell you what difference it makes. Yes, sir. You and Harold think you'll have a good time. It's your wedding. So I want the other people to have a good time, too. Well, we're not going to keep them from having a good time. No, darling, I should say you're not. That's why the wedding has to be at night. Well, I don't understand. I think If you you're... don't understand something, why do you keep talking? As long as you're talking, you can't learn nothing. That's why your mouth is big, so you can shut up yourself. And your ears, they keep open all the time, eh? But still, I don't I'll understand. I'll tell you. Oh. People like us, all our friends, we ain't society people either. They got to work all day long, so that at night they can go out and act like society people. If you make them come to our wedding in the daytime, they're worried what's going on in their stores while they're at your wedding. So they don't have a good time. And the whole wedding is wasted. Nobody's happy but Mrs. Fink, and I don't like her anyhow. Becky, you're right. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, we'll have a wedding at night. Mm -hmm. That's my smart little girl talking. Oh, it's lucky the wedding's over a month off. It'll give you and Pa a chance to go out and get some new furniture to fix up the place. New furniture? Well, yeah, I thought maybe it's a, well, a new dining room suite. This one we've had ever since I can remember. Well, it's good enough. New dining room suites we don't need. If the food on the table is good enough, the table don't have to be genuine cat's eye maple. <laughs> oh, my. Becky, now I know why I fell in love with you. You're talking sense. There'll be enough expense without buying new furniture. You're right, Jay. The money we save by not buying our new dining room suite, we put a few hundred dollars to and have the whole parlor fixed up. I am buying your new furniture. Jake, I don't feel like hiking with you, huh? So I'll buy the new furniture and you can pay the bill. I am buying no new furniture. All right, Papa. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. I can afford it, but I am buying no new furniture. <laughs> How can people know you can afford new furniture if you don't buy new furniture? It makes no difference to me, you understand. But if you want people to go around saying, poor Jake Bloom, his last daughter got married and he couldn't afford a few sticks of new furniture, I guess I can stand it. Well, I want the place to look nice. Harold's aunt's bound to be here and her husband's worth millions. So I'd like to show off a little bit. Uh, Harold's aunt. Yet, yeah, what's her name? This is Isidore Cohen, the third. Mm -hmm. The name sounds a little familiar. She lives out west now, but before she was married, she lived right down on 10th Street. What was her name then? Ida Goldfarb. Ida Goldfarb. Ida Goldfarb. Papa, where are you going? <laughs> Mama, I'm going to look at some new furniture. 